Got a treat for you today. We're at Colorburst Plant Farm in Murfreesboro, and I'm here with Matt Veer, owner, grower of these beautiful plants. Today, we're gonna to talk about full sun perennials. And Matt, I know the public comes in in the spring and they're all, they're a lot of impulse buys of what looks beautiful, mm -hmm. right? That's right. But spring's the time to buy for your garden throughout the year. I mean, stuff doesn't just bloom in the spring. Plan ahead, make your garden beautiful. And I'd love for you to tell us some of, about some of these plants, starting with this beautiful verbena. Okay, I'd be happy to. This is a verbena that is native to the area. In fact, I collected this plant just down the road. It is a verbena canadensis, and this is a lavender pink. It's similar to homestead purple, but this one will bloom in the spring, and then that's pretty much it for it, uh, unlike homestead, which will continue through the summer. But it's a nice native plant, grows well in our heavy soils, our hot climate. A uh, great native plant for a sunny garden. Oh, this is a, a beautiful salvia that came out a few years ago called Evaline. And just starting to open up right now with these little pink flowers. And this one is nice because it will continue to throw out some blooms all summer. Okay, so this has a heavy bloom period in the... In the spring. In the spring, but it... It'll continue to kind of spit some flowers okay. out as the summer progresses. Excellent. It's best to deadhead the old flowers. That right. will encourage new ones to come up. How about this beautiful oh, thing? Oh, Dianthus fire, which this mm -hmm. was a perennial plant association's plant of the year a few years ago. And you can see these kind of hot pink flowers mm -hmm. just, just starting. starting. Now. Look at all the blooms. Long bloom period Long, on this plant. Blooms heavily in the spring, and then again, it, it'll continue to put some flowers out as the summer progresses. And lovely. Kind Evergreen of block foliage, yeah, yeah. Oh, and this is a beautiful Baptisia. I love oh. Baptisias for the foliage as much for the flowers. The foliage is clean. Insects don't bother them. Diseases mm -hmm. don't bother them. And this is a yellow one. Normally, Baptisias we think of as being uh, blue. purple. Yeah, blue. blue, purple, yeah. And this is a nice yellow one. Oh, that's great. That's called Carolina Moonlight. Carolina Moonlight. Okay, now that's sort of spring and a little bit later. And now let's talk late spring into early summer. Okay. okay? I love this plant. Uh, Gara, this is a, a plant, uh, one called white butterfly, or whirling bu mm -hmm. butterflies. It's another and native, it's, isn't it? It is, yeah. is a native, and, and it'll do very well in a, a, a dry, sunny site. Doesn't like too much moisture. Hot, very drought tolerant. Little tiny flowers, but they're abundant. So yeah. you get a nice impact. And, and it's, a, it's a kind of a light, airy, airy impact. Airy, wispy, that it which has. is where yes. the butterfly reference. Now, what our wonderful flocks. All right, we have three different flocks here. This is one called uh, Robert Poor, kind of has a bronzy mm -hmm. foliage in the spring. This is a, one called David, probably the most mildew resistant right. of the Phlox paniculata types. Right. And here is a dwarf one called Purple Flame. Yeah, the Flame about, series is new, isn't it? It is yeah. new. There are four or five colors, pink flame, lilac flame, white flame. Mm -hmm. They'll go to about 15 inches, 15 to 18 inches. That is dwarf, because I know Robert continue Poor. To bloom. I've seen Robert Poor get five, six feet oh, yeah, tall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but these are all mildew resistant, which and mildew is the big problem with growing flocks. Right. As it is the problem, with typically with Monarda, Monarda bee balm. or bee balm, right? Mm -hmm. This is a red form, a red and flowered form mm -hmm. called Jacob Klein, which is probably the mo one of the most mildew resistant. In my experience, it is the most is. mildew resistant that I've grown anyway. Be careful where you plant it. It does like the run, mm -hmm. but it, it's a good kind of run. It can be thuggish in perf in great conditions, which is uh, ample moisture, actually. You can actually control it, I think, by how much water it gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, there is no greater hummingbird no, magnet no, on no. the planet. They right. love this plant. Exactly. And here, to my mind, is the best Chasta daisy from it the is. south. This is one called Becky, and it again was a perennial plant association's plant of the year a number of years ago. And it goes to about three feet. The flowers will get up to about three feet tall. And a heavy bloomer and just a, a good, right. tough plant. Big, classic white daisies. Mm -hmm. And we all th know geraniums, which are actually the kind that you put in your window box, but this is not, it's, that's not a real geranium. That's not a real geranium. This right. is. This is. These right. are the hardy geraniums. Mm -hmm. The annual ones are actually pelargoniums. Right. But this has this beautiful blue-purple yeah. flower. This is one called Brookside, and it's similar to one called Johnson's Blue, but it's an improvement on Johnson's Blue, mm -hmm. at least in my mind it is. A little deeper blue flower mm -hmm. and a little bit more compact. And there's another variety, which we don't have here today, but it's called Roseanne, and that is the current. The current perennial, perennial plant, plant of, of the year. year. And speaking of perennial plants of the year, we have... Catmint. Walker's Low Catmint. Mm -hmm. This was selected, I think it was last year. Or the year before. Or the year before. Yeah, yeah. They've been going on since 1991, the Perennial Plant Society. Mm -hmm. Every year their members 
which is nearly 2,000 strong now. From all over from the From all continent. over the world. Yeah, right. Primarily here in the U.S., yes. from every state in the country. And this is a great choice for that plant, this Walker's Lone Catmint. Nepeta is the botanical name, in case you're interested. Now, the middle of summer, hot, what do you want? Oh. Echinacea. Echinacea. <laughs> Cone flowers. Beautiful, beautiful. And we've got three that we're talking They've about They've gotten here. so popular mm -hmm. over the years. And again, we don't have the one here that was a perennial plant association pick a few years ago, Magnus. But you know but what? I think there are improvements on Magnus are. now. This being one, vintage wine. Oh, vintage wine. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's one that you don't see it much. And right, it's It's a little new. bit more expensive. It's right. patented and you have to pay a little more, but it's worth it. Deep purple. Deep raspberry, raspberry purple kind of. Raspberry purple. Uh, florets. But it's not a muddy color, it's really a no, bright, very clear. bright color. The flowers color. are held upright. Mm -hmm. And then there are all these cool hybrids that they have come out, like this. This sunrise. is a yellow one, Sunrise. The It's All Nursery, which is in outside of Atlanta, is are the people that are Alfred hybridizing Georgia, these. Yes. Yeah. And so you know that does well in the South. Right, there's a, the oranges, there's yellows, there's other shades mm -hmm. of peach. And then, of course, there's the Tennessee Coneflower. This is one called Rocky Top Hybrid but it looks a whole lot like our native. And talk about hot, dry. <laughs> That's where it grows. That's yeah, where it lives. cedar glades is where it lives. Right. And what's wonderful about this one is it has these really bright pink flowers that always face east. So when you plant it, it's a good idea to locate it that with mm. that in mind. And my favorite yarrow. It, Actually, this is a great one. yeah, this is a great one. Some yarrows don't do so well in our heat in Tennessee. This one does great, even though it says it's a Siberian. This is Love Parade. Right. I love the. And this one dogs. will not swallow up the garden either. Like right, some will. it's not a thug. Everyone knows Sedum Autumn Joy. Right, it's been around a long time. Sometimes it's called Live Forever. Right. This is an improvement on Autumn Joy, and it's one called Autumn Fire. Mm -hmm. Looks very similar to Autumn Joy. In fact, most people won't even be able to tell the difference. Right. However, Autumn Joy is just, just notorious for falling apart no in kidding. midsummer. It gets about yay tall and goes boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Autumn Fire will not, I won't say it won't do it, but it's much more resistant to that Dense, specific rot that more causes compact. it. Right. Yeah. Now, if you want your Autumn Joy or Autumn Fire seed them to perform a little bit better, it's a good idea. Oh, mid to late May, early June. Just take the plant and cut it back halfway, mm -hmm. and you really feel bad. You feel like you're going to kill your plant doing that. But what that does, it creates a lot more branching and reduces the height it of the plant. It makes it more height. compact. Yeah. And one of the reasons these sedums fall apart is because they get so heavy, they're loaded with water. These big, thick heavy. leaves, they get top heavy, yeah. and they crack off. Yeah. But if you cut them back about mid-early June, uh, they'll still come up and bloom. More blooms, not quite as tall. Right but it'll still give you a spectacular display. And we talked about hummingbirds with the Monarda. Oh, Let's talk yeah. about butterflies with this butterfly bush. Mm -hmm. This is a new strain of butterfly it bush, is. isn't it's it? It's an English, they're called the English series. Mm -hmm. This the particular one is a peacock. Yeah, or, I'm sorry, purple, purple emperor. emperor. There's right. a pink one called peacock. And these plants go to about four feet tall, three and a half to four feet tall. Oh, so they don't get as rangy as the no, old fashioned type. A lot of people are scared by buddleias mm -hmm. because they get 10 feet tall. Yes, and and you have to they, constantly cut them back right. and they get woody. and. Uh, but these, long blooming, it's a good mm -hmm. idea to deadhead them, just mm -hmm. shear them back after they're finished blooming, they'll come out right. and bloom again. So this again. will bloom all summer into the fall it if will. you just deadhead it. Absolutely. And my favoritest, late fall, this one starts blooming for me in October and keeps going. Mm -hmm. This is Radon's favorite aster, and it's another native. It is a native. It's uh, Aster oblongifolia, mm -hmm. uh, or oblongifolia aster rather. Blooms late in the season, mildew resistant. Tough as nails. Tough as nails, and I want to, you have to imagine, but the flowers are lavender blue with a yellow center, classic daisy aster shape. And I got to tell you, when I have one of these at my house that's been in for eight years, it's a long-lived plant. Mine is probably four, one plant, probably three feet across by maybe gets about 30, 34 yeah, inches tall. Right. And it, I cannot see the foliage of this plant when it is in bloom. It is covered mm -hmm. with flowers. It's just, just a, a, such a great way to end the year. It's Radon's just, favorite. Radon's Absolutely. favorite, and it does it until hard frost, and then it's done. So you can see what a great selection of plants for almost everything except the dead of winter. You can have wonderful blooms. Even in wintertime, we've got things that'll yep. look nice. So when you go shopping, don't just think about spring and buy the thing with a flower on top. Plan ahead and you can have a glorious sun perennial garden with color all the time.